One of the most frequent common questions that I get from people on this channel, but also from PhD students and researchers who want to work with me on my programs, Research Paper Mastery or PhD Accelerator, is about the research gap. How do I find the research gap? What is a research gap? So that's why in this video, I wanted to dive deeper into one specific type of a research gap and show you with clear examples from research papers how you can highlight the research gap. So let's dive in and get started. If you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkowek and I run Academic English Now, where I help PhD students and researchers regularly write research papers for top journals in the field. And by far the most, most common question I keep on getting for, from the members of my program or from you here on this YouTube channel is regarding the research gap. And I've done other videos on, you know, the different types of research gaps and how to find them. But in here, I just want to zoom in on one specific type of a research gap, which is limitations of previous studies and show you, you know, the, the different types of this research gap and also show you exactly how to highlight it in a research paper with some examples. So this is not the only type of a research gap. You can only or you can also have research gaps such as, you know, lack of studies on a particular topic. Um, you could also have research gaps to do with real world problems that need solving. But in here, let's focus on one which is limitations of previous studies. What do I mean by that? Well, all previous research, no matter, you know, in what high impact journal it has been published, will have some weak points. And your role as you're reading the literature is to find those weak points. So think about it like this, you know, you're, you're sort of scanning the, the research, uh, the literature, previous studies, and you're looking for weaknesses that those studies have. And each study will have some sort of a weakness and it's actually very easy to find because you can simply jump to the conclusion section of a paper and the researchers themselves will point out the limitations of the study there in the conclusion section. So you don't actually have to do that much hard thinking. It doesn't require that much brain power because the researchers themselves, those other researchers, they have already done the hard work for you, right? So jump to the conclusion and see what limitations they pointed out and then start listing them in a table so you can start seeing patterns of limitations, right? And then of course you can also dive a little bit deeper and then start critically analyzing some of the studies yourself. And when you're doing that, you primarily want to be focusing on the methodology, right? So one big type of limitations is to do with methodology. This can be to do with the, with the sample. So what or who was studied. For example, in many social sciences, the sample size are, sizes are really laughably small. You know, in my field in teaching English, people sometimes study like 10, 20 people, right? From such a small sample size, you can't really draw any generalizable conclusions, right? And um, when we look at the sample, another very common weakness is to have no uh, control group, right? So you're checking the effect of a certain procedure, drug, whatever it is, right? on a certain group of people, but you have no control group which gets, you know, no treatment or gets a placebo, right? Therefore, you can't really know whether it's the treatment that works or it's just that group of people, right? So that's another common uh, limitation of a study. It can also, limitations of a study can also do with the procedures, the research procedures. For example, you know, specifically how the study was conducted, you know, which methods were used, you know, which data analysis techniques were used. Very often it's possible to use, you know, multiple data analysis techniques or at least more than one, maybe two or three. And the researchers decided to choose one, but potentially they, they could have chosen a different one, right? And there's usually more than one approach to a specific problem, right? Um, which also means that, you know, if a lot of researchers are taking one specific approach, you know, we might be missing out some important data, right? 
Um, the limitations of the study also can have something to do with the, with the study context, right? Um, the context itself can be very limiting because maybe the study is limited to, uh, you know, to a specific location or it's a specific case study of you know one specific company in a specific city in one country right which of course is a big limitation as well now on the other hand you know um, another limitation with research tools and procedures is that you know let's say quantitative studies they, they study a lot of people but maybe more superficially rather than diving deeper into a smaller number of people but diving deeper and getting more in-depth data, right? So these are just some types of limitations of studies that you should be looking for when you're reading the literature. It's, and the limitations, of course, are not just to do with methodology. You could also look at um, especially the discussion and the conclusion that the researchers draw out of their data. Right? So you want to be looking at those conclusions and thinking to yourself whether they are actually warranted. Right? whether the data warrants the conclusion. So that's where the limitations can lie as well. But this perhaps sounds a little bit theoretical. So let me show you on a specific example from published research papers, how this is actually done and how researchers point out limitations in the study. All right, so the first example that I wanna show you comes from a paper about uh, obesity and dieting and if we scroll down to the end of the introduction um, the writer here expresses different sorts of research gaps such as for example lack of clarity or lack of understanding about something right but to come back to our gap on limitations of previous studies um, what he says is that previous methods of dietary self-monitoring monitoring did not lend themselves to Right? So those methods of dietary self-monitoring that previous studies use are limited because they did not allow to, for example, analyze the time spent. Right? So that's a limitation of previous studies. And also there is another limitation of those previous studies and of those methods that previous studies used because they did not allow to evaluate the timing and the frequency. Right? So this is how limitations of previous studies can be pointed out to then, um, you know, justify your own focus because then, um, you know, the right justifies their own methodology and the use of other better tools to monitor certain things, right? And another example that I want to show you uh, comes from my own paper, so a different discipline teaching English more sort of social sciences so that you see that, you know, this really works across the fields regardless of which field that you're in, right? So now um, the first um, limitation of course in here is a lack of studies, right? But in this video we're focusing more on limitations of previous studies. So the second lim um, a research gap that the writer points out here is you know the limitation of previous studies in terms of the context and the time they were conducted right so they were conducted either in the us or the uk which is of course a limitation and you know they're pretty old as well by now right and you know another limitation of, a, of another study that i point out here is a very small sample size right of only five people so that's another big limitation right and then also in here you know if you can find it like what i use is um, a quote from one previous uh, research that further highlights uh, the limited nature of all those previous studies right and in here you know specifically that the previous studies are limited because they did not generate any recommendations right which is what i'm going to try to do in this study so remember, when trying to highlight the research gap, you can focus on limitations of previous studies. Look at the discussion or the conclusion section to see which limitations the researchers themselves identified and use those, try to see patterns to justify your own study. If this was helpful and you want to work with me more personally, 
then schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation with myself or my team where we're going to dive deeper into the problems, the challenges that you have and we'll outline a personalized strategy that will help you to achieve your goals and help you to publish more research papers. And the link to do that is right below the video.